American University in Bulgaria. Okay, well, some of you know me, some of you don't. I'm a professor of history at this university, teaching Balkan history and Ottoman history. Some have had the pleasure or not to be in my classes. So, uh, Balkan Wars. I'm not very much a war person, so I won't speak about the wars as such. Uh, history for me is about reasons, what caused something to happen. Of course, we should know what happened, but also about results. So today, what I will talk about is reasons, what brought about the Balkan Wars. It's not that difficult for those who are even, uh, well, not very much familiar with Balkan history, but I will bring you to what happened and what precipitated the wars. Uh, by the way, you probably know that we are celebrating or noting, some are celebrating, others are noting, uh, the hundred years uh, from the beginning of the Balkan, the first Balkan war. There are two of them. Uh, in Bulgarian historiography, the second is not called Balkan war, it is something inter-alliance well, among the allies. Well, what brought the war? Well, uh, 19th century is a century of belated but very accelerated nation building and state building in the Balkans. The Ottoman Empire, the sick man of Europe, uh, was very quickly losing territories either to its uh, much more powerful neighbors Austria-Hungary, Russia is not on the horizon, but it's actually the most important agent. And also due to it, internal secession. Secession in Greece, where we have the uh, independent kingdom of Greece emerging as early as 1830, and the principality of Serbia, which eventually, by uh, after the war of uh, of 1877-78 became independent. But it was boiling everywhere. Bulgaria, well, Bosnia had other problems. So eventually we have a war. We, <laughs> they had a war. Russo-Turkish or Russo-Ottoman War of 1877-78. The war was um, expected by many people in the Balkans with great expectations. The expectations, however, were not fully met. And the Congress of Berlin left many unhappy countries. Why they, were they unhappy? Greece, well, Greece stayed what it was. It was hoping to get some, a few territories. Serbia was hoping to get all this, well, with the exception of Montenegro, but a lot of this and reach the Adriatic, it wasn't allowed. Montenegro was expecting to get much larger territory, it wasn't allowed. Bulgaria, it began with San Stefano, it even today celebrates San Stefano rather than when it actually became, became a state or independent state. Well, it was promised as much as this. <laughs> you see what it received. So uh, after the Berlin Congress, all the countries in, the, in uh, the Balkans were expecting more, were hoping to get more, and uh, the natural focus of all the expectations focused here. And there were other territories which were contested, uh, which were wanted, but Macedonia turned out to be the question, and why? Because Macedonia, first of all, it has very mixed population. All the, uh, well, all the surveys, 
or the evaluations of the population show different uh, numbers. Uh, I have, uh, I can quote some of these numbers. It's very funny. If it is Ottomans, it's uh, one number. If it is Greeks, I mean, as sources, they give completely different numbers where Greeks are the, let's say, 60% of the population, but the rest are uh, distributed among various Slavs and uh, Muslims. If it is Bulgarians, of course, more than 50% of the population is Bulgarian. The others are next to nothing. Well, if it is Serbs, even Serbs, one of the surveys of Serbs from the beginning of 20th century says that Serbs in Macedonia are 2 million and uh, 50,000 people, while Turks, that is Muslims, are 231, Bulgarians 57,000, Greeks 200,000. The numbers are equally preferred. Every country has its preferred uh, statistics to which it refers. Why was Macedonia so important? Because Macedonia as a territory, well, it's quite, it's central. Whichever country acquires Macedonia, uh, it becomes the largest territory and controls, the largest state and controls the Balkans. And if it is Bulgaria, it's like this. If it is Greece, it's this. Don't forget that by this time, all three countries had their policies of um, nation building and state expansion and building. Uh, the Greeks are famous for having the great idea, Omegali idea, which included all the Balkans plus Asia Minor. Serbia had a more uh, realistic uh, plan, which it was following, but it was actually limited by Austria-Hungary, which took Bosnia, the first step in the expansion of Serbia. That was Gorashanin's plan for building a South Slavic state, big South Slavic state, which came into existence after World War I, actually. So, uh, Macedonia proved to be the uh, core territory, and on top of everything, there is everybody. Uh, when travelers cross the Balkans, they are already struck by the great variety of languages, people who live even in one city. I mean, there is no uh, homogeneity of population. Macedonia and the area around Edirne were the top of it. Not surprising, you probably have seen Macedonian salad. Hmm? In all the shops in Western Europe, you can see Macedonian salad. It can be fruit, it can be vegetables, but it shows uh, how much Westerners were struck by this variety which they saw. Everything that's possible to find, you put in one place. Well, Macedonia with its mixed population, with so many Muslims, Christians, by the way, somebody, uh, most of the people were not noticing, but there was yet another factor in Macedonia which the others were not noticing. Albanians. The war of the Russo-Turkish war actually triggered the Albanian national movement, which exploded in 1878, and within less, well, 30 years with 30-ish years would lead, actually our Balkan Wars would lead to the independence, independent Greek uh, state, uh, Albanian state. Well, Albanians were also a factor there. So Macedonia, on the one hand, is very important. It gives grounds to all claims. And on the other hand, it's very difficult to divide. And since all these countries didn't see anybody else but themselves, or, I mean, thought about themselves as uh, the dominant element. Sometimes it was wishful thinking, sometimes simply neglect, but anyway, there were grounds for all claims. Well, after 1878, most of the, well, the three countries focused on Macedonia, 
The Ottoman Empire, of course, wanted to keep Macedonia for itself. That's its legal I mean, uh, justified uh, interest. And Albanians were definitely not happy to have these territories divided among the neighbors. So there was a development of a program organization also for liberation of uh, Albania. Well, uh, Macedonia focused uh, both state-sponsored um, activities, Greece, Serbia and Bulgaria in different uh, levels were uh, involved in sponsoring and organizing, as they called them at the time, propagandas, militarized, in which fought. And the population there actually suffered from all those. Uh, there were also organizations, local organizations. Some were influenced very much by outsiders. The famous IMRO, or the Internal Macedonian Revolutionary Organization, it split into pro-Bulgarian, anti-autonomist, in various uh, directions in that. So in this chaos, as Macedonia looked in the eyes of both insiders and outsiders, at the beginning of the 20th century, there was an uprising an uprising led by the internal uh, Macedonian revolutionary organization, which of course was, uh, of course, because the Ottomans were much stronger at the time, it did not develop as planned, it, many reasons. The result was that actually those who felt Bulgarians, many of them left Macedonia. Some remained. Also, Bulgaria was a great loser in this bidding for Macedonia because it uh, did not support the uprising. It did not help those. There were quite a few, many people who moved to Bulgaria as refugees, which made the Macedonian factor in Bulgarian politics very strong and very active in all the uh, international decisions afterwards, I mean, from then onwards. Well, uh, Macedonian, uh, the other loser was the Bulgarian church because it dealt very serious blow, this uprising. The uh, structures were uh, undermined and the trust of the Ottoman authority was, the great winner was the patriarchate supported by Greece, still here, and the Serbian military propaganda. The Ottomans gave quite a few, well, gifts to Serbs. So the situation in Macedonia continued to, uh, well, to become more and more complex, more and more uh, difficult. Finally, there is yet another factor to the complication in Macedonia. Uh, the Ottoman Empire lived through a coup in which the Ottoman Sultan was eventually not fully replaced, but made a puppet in the hands of a very nationalistic military group, the so-called Young Turks, who originally promised all the democratic, uh, I mean, well, nice things like parliament, restoration of the parliament, restoration of the constitution, and equality to all the uh, minorities. Eventually, within only the Albanians were very uh, sober and they knew what was, so they did not trust the developments in uh, the Ottoman Empire, stayed aside. But Macedonian movements trusted, participated to see that actually the young uh, Turks were actually much more nationalists than uh, the Sultan before. Well, there were many problems continuing problems, but uh, since the, the war, we haven't yet declared the war, well, skipping all this, this is the constellation. There was yet another uh, situation which uh, aggravated the uh, Macedonian issue. First, Bulgaria declared itself, itself independent. It's all in 1908, in the coup of young Turks 
Bulgaria is becoming fully independent. By the way, you always celebrate this on 22nd of September when you are uh, here. And Austria fully annexed Bosnia and Herzegovina, making Serbia absolutely unable to fulfill its first step of expansion and forcing Serbia to direct itself to Kosovo and to Macedonia. So Kosovo and Macedonia become the goals for Serbia. Well, there was uh, the Ottomans were expecting, by the way, it's very interesting, it seems that the Ottoman diplomacy, nobody uh, expected that the three states, actually the four, also including Montenegro, would eventually uh, form an alliance. The uh, clash of their interests was so, it was so clear that uh, there was contested territory, or rather overlapping interests, that the, uh, the Ottomans and even the great powers did not expect that any alliance would ever materialize. But uh, actually, it, uh, there was an alliance. The alliance was prepared uh, in, actually Bulgaria served as the center of this alliance, and this alliance was, uh, I mean, the worst ever alliance that one may conclude <laughs> or uh, will uh, form. How was it done? Well, uh, first there were verbal agreements. In verbal agreements between, for, ex uh, for common action between Greece and Serbia. There was uh, actually the most fixed uh, Alliance, uh, agreement was between, I'm sorry, but uh, contested territories. Well, this was the alliance between uh, Serbia and Bulgaria. This was the only thing that was more material. What Serbia and Bulgaria agreed to was that Serbia will take all the lands uh, north of Shar Mountain. You can see it there, Shar Planina. Bulgarians would take all the territories of Macedonia east of this. But there was a very large territory between, which was something which was not decided. And the final decision was left with the Russian Tsar. But Serb, Serbia had already prepared kind of the uh, way for the decision in the case, although the Russian Tsar was against the war in general. So there was also an agreement that Bulgaria would bring 200,000 uh, soldiers, Serbia 150,000. And Serbia, what she was hoping mostly for, was expansion to the Adriatic. Well, with Greece, Bulgaria reached a much less um, definitive agreement than even with Serbia. Montenegro was also, so it was oral and um, very fluid decisions, actually. No uh, strict no program rigid for who is taking what. Because Macedonia for them was mainly in something to divide. Bulgaria was the only one which at some point insisted on autonomous Macedonia in the hope that autonomous Macedonia would jump and say, we want you, yeah? and to join Bulgaria. Uh, so the war is declared. You know who began the war? Do you know? Hmm? Montenegro, yes. So, although the great powers and the Ottomans realized probably a couple of weeks before the beginning of the war that there is such a preparation. It's very amazing how uh, the great powers were actually unable to understand that there was something possible. They always relied on the conflict, the potential conflict between all the countries and their overlapping interests. So the war begins. I mean, I 
don't need to tell you all the heroic deeds that all the armies did. Uh, it was at two stages, the war, the Bulgarians reached uh, close to uh, Istanbul. Uh, at the second stage, they managed to take even Edirne, which was great um, achievement for warfare at the time because it was very well um, defended fortress. Serbs expanded to Macedonia, entered Kosovo Macedonia, and close to uh, Adriatic, Greeks reached Thessaloniki and entered. So with many casualties, I'll show you at the end the casualties, many casualties, but also from uh, plague, in cholera in the first place. Uh, so many casualties, but successful story. Well, uh, the first war ends with this. What is, however, I mean, well, there is something which already upsets the order or the arrangements, the Albanians declare independence. The computer is very slow. Well, this is what I ask my students sometimes. So, this is Ismail Cemali. Are there Albanians here? Yes. So, Ismail Cemali, you probably know, uh, declared the independence of Albania from the house, from his house. Albanians here, here is Kenderbek riding a horse, and I um, mean, a symbol of the unity of the three or four actually religious groups in Albania. So, what is the problem about Albania declaring its independence? It upsets all the arrangements. I mean, Serbia wants North Albania, Greece wants South Albania, and uh, nothing left of Albania, and Montenegro also wants, wants part of, uh, of Albania. So this means that we have a potential conflict already, because once Albania takes a ship, there should be compensations for those who expected that their gains would be also in these territories. Yeah. So, well, uh, very quickly, and uh, don't uh, need to go into the details of the war, well, what happened, there were arrangements in London, and uh, there was a declaration that Albania would be independent without boundaries no uh, decisions for which particularly part of um, Albania, I mean the Balkans would be Albanian, but, uh, well, let's go to this. Uh, well, what happened was that actually in uh, well, if you look at the map above, it shows you what were the decisions. Albania, roughly the boundaries, all the rest is not actually firmly decided, and it remains for decisions. Well, by then, I mean, uh, Bulgaria is confident that it has done the bulk of the work that it has indeed, if when you look at the casualties, the majority, quite a number, are from Bulgaria. That it had fought the most uh, serious battles against uh, towards Constantinople, it, it nearly reached Constantinople, Edirne, and that uh, the allies are actually taking for granted or as a present, what they have taken. Well, uh, by then, Serbia and Greece are quite unhappy that Albania has come into existence. So, uh, in problems, problems. And the problems are, well, Bulgaria is so confident that it's so strong and capable of fighting all its neighbors, that, uh, and the popular, well, actually the popular opinion, the public opinion was not very much in favor of a second war. Uh, reading uh, 
memoirs from the time, and not only memoirs, but diaries, which are more reliable as sources, uh, apparently people were not terribly happy to have uh, a second war. But the Tsar, Ferdinand, was confident that this is the time to show our neighbors, and apparently it's Bulgarians who began the war. Meanwhile, however, misjudging the situation. First, overestimating its own potential to fight everybody, and second, uh, not taking into account the rapprochement between Serbia and Greece. And there was already, there had been concluded an agreement between the two countries. So as soon as Bulgarians began, they met not only Serbia and Greece, by the way, the account of the battles which were, um, which took place, it's 50-50. 50% won by Bulgarians, 50% by the Allies, uh, the Serbs and Greece. But eventually Bulgaria had to fight against all its neighbors. Why? Because first, I mean, Serbia and Greece, they fight for Macedonia, for the territories there. But Romania, which even during the first war claimed the right to be compensated. The compensation principle comes always in. And what was the right for compensation? Because Bulgaria is expanding towards Macedonia. Uh, Romania wanted compensation, Silistra and the region there. Bulgarians didn't want any negotiations. And as soon as they were engaged in a battle with Serbia and Greece, Romania simply moved in, reached very uh, close to Sofia. Not only that, but the Ottomans, although I mean, this is very interesting, the Ottomans stayed for a while, did not move in, because they were not sure whether they won't be punished, but eventually they got the approval from some great powers, friendly great powers, and they also moved in. And they took uh, Adrianople, so the border between Bulgaria and uh, Turkey is where now where it was fixed after that war. So Turkey restored some of its, uh, the Ottoman Empire restored some of its territory. So what happened was that uh, uh, Romania wanted compensation also because there was a very tiny minority in Macedonia called Vlachs. Vlach, yeah. Romanians, that they were, uh, they are not in ta ta exactly Romanians, but they were, let's say, adopted by Romania as their minority and protected by them. So as a compensation for the Vlachs, well, to cut it short, we reach the uh, Peace Treaty of Bucharest, which sealed the situation in the Balkans. Well, the Treaty of uh, Bucharest, well, you see the territories that were. I'll show you a few cartoons which were drawn at the time uh, in Romania, for example. Can you see it? Well, it says during the sessions, in the first, can you recognize the agents there? Hmm? Well, Serbia, Greece, this is the Bulgarian czar. This probably is somebody else, don't see the, uh, oh, this must be the Ottoman, yeah, because there is a fess, yeah. And you see after the Congress, I suppose this, this is a Romanian cartoon. Uh, this is not, the uh, punch has a similar, uh, I liked it also, yes. I think this one. Can you, this is from punch. Well, this is, I guess all the Bulgarians can recognize the Tsar of Bulgaria. Hmm? This is the Romanian king who is taking 
part of uh, Bulgaria's uh, territory. And these are the Greek and the, um, well, what was, uh, I mean, what they did was, that, as I said, this is not something I have invented. Uh, the reaction at the time was this. Well, go back to our maps. What happened? Well, the big winners were Greece and Serbia. Serbia expanded taking contemporary Kosovo and a uh, significant part of Macedonia. Greece expanded taking something that we call today Egypt or Macedonia, uh, reaching Bulgaria is still given a small outlet on the agency, which it will lose during the next war. Bulgaria loses also uh, South Dobruja. That's a territory which went to Romania. This, since it never actually was under its administration, is not that big loss. Although I have read reports of uh, Bulgarian, even churchmen, who were making plans which uh, mosques in Istanbul, in Edirne, would be converted into churches and which would not. Uh, it remained only with the plans. In Edirne was very briefly under. So, what are the results? I mean, territorially, uh, you see, Serbia is on the way to achieving its uh, ideal with only Bosnia missing, but that would come very soon. Uh, Greece, very far yet from its um, ideal, the great idea, the Megali idea, in Anatolia is still, still on the horizon. There will be an attempt, not very, uh, in again, a uh, short uh, future, but very unsuccessful compared to Serbia. So still, Greece is happy at the moment. Bulgaria, however, and this is one of the worst results, Bulgaria is absolutely embittered and ready for revenge. I will read to you a text, very brief text from, yes, an excerpt from, from an article in a Bulgarian newspaper. The peace treaty is signed. The peace treaty has been signed in Bucharest, but there will be no peace at all in the Balkans. There cannot be peace where there is violence. The peace treaty signed in Bucharest is an approval of the most brutal violence. Bulgaria will never be reconciled with it, truncated, narrowed in borders, plundered, stifled, raped. It will start working within its frontiers to strengthen ten times its economic, cultural and physical powers so that at its earliest convenience it will take what belongs to it, both by national and historical rights. This was written immediately after the uh, Peace Treaty of Bucharest. So, no surprise why Bulgaria, as soon as World War I began, joined the, exactly this uh, camp, which was revision. I mean, about revision. Germany wanted other revisions, Bulgaria wanted its own revisions, so it joined the camp of Germany, so did, by the end, uh, uh, very strange coincidence, the Ottoman Empire. So in World War I, Bulgaria and Ottoman Empire would fight together against neighbors and Russia. And that's one of the ironies of uh, history. Uh, so on the one hand, I mean, Bulgaria is not ready for revenge because it lost a lot in terms of uh, casualties, economy, etc but is ready to fight, at least its leaders, not so much the people. So, uh, what happened to the Ottoman Empire, it sided with the um, Germany also, becoming more and more economically dependent, so was Bulgaria, taking loans from Germany and uh, attaching its economy more and more to uh, Germany. 
Well, what also happened, something which I missed uh, passing to mention, but which is very important when we talk about uh, uh, effect of the war, during the Balkan Wars, the Bulgarian church undertook one of its uh, attempts to reconvert. Reconvert, you know probably that in the Rhodope area there is a significant Pomak population. Have you heard about Pomaks? Hmm? Well, during the Balkan War, after the army, went the clergy. And they, their explanation was, well, they were forcefully converted. This is something subject to revision in Bulgarian historiography, but still. Since they were forcefully converted, now it's time for them to become Christians, to come back. And uh, I went in 92 in some villages in the Rhodops, where all people still show the places where their ancestors had to stamp their Muslim caps and to become Christians in order to become Bulgarians. Because being Bulgarian, required to be Orthodox Christian. Well, uh, as uh, the army, uh, the army was not enthusiastic about this, and rightfully it wasn't, because uh, Pomaks had an uprising. So after the Balkan Wars, this project was abandoned to other times. But this is something that comes also in um, memory, at least in the region, as part of the Balkan Wars. Uh, what else happened? Well, the else is related to economy, casualties, and also very bitter relations between the neighbors. Well, I, what I wanted to show you is something which has always, uh, yes. Uh, I must say that Bulgarian uh, popular posters are less imaginative. The Greek ones are indeed... Can you see what it is on the poster? Well, to explain, these are Greek soldiers which take out the eyes of uh, Bulgarian soldiers. This was, these were posters. This is a Bulgarian one, this is a Greek one. Another poster, sim also very popular at the time. Uh, now we uh, collect propaganda from all sides. In many of them are bloodthirsty. This one is, oof. do you know what is written on top? Hmm? Do you know what? Bulgarophagus. Do you know what that means? Bulgarian eater. Yes. And you can see the eater. Again, it's Greek, Greek or Bulgarian relations. Well, after that, it was very difficult to have friendly mutual, because it was years of such uh, propaganda. By the way, I've read also texts from before the wars. They were not much friendlier than, but during the wars, there was pacification during the first war. The second war, all the emotions erupted. The great, actually, the uh, Greeks never uh, regarded Serbs as an actual uh, contester for Macedonia. It was the Bulgarians with whom they, they competed. So, uh, difficult relations also on lower level, because this is years also of education. These are texts with uh, texts and pictures which were used for education of. Uh, as I said, in Bulgaria, there are similar but less imaginative. I mean, just uh, Bulgarians sit on, uh, on a crescent and they cut the crescent. I mean, that's nothing compared to this. So uh, there were such posters on Serbian side, on Turkish side. There were many photos of raped women texts about raped women, you know that this is a symbolic uh, figure in all in its reality as well as uh, a figure in, in all the war uh, re um, reports. So 
education for years would continue, especially in Bulgaria, to uh, reproduce this animosity, and on the other side, again, also, with different overtones. The economy. Well, uh, the economy is something which can be contested. What I have is uh, various statistics from, uh, well, let's first see the casualties. Well, you can see the casualties. Casualties on population of this, and you see the, the numbers. Rather significant, well, for all countries, but uh, some suffered more than others, probably. Uh, economy. War expenditures. In, uh, I've taken this for, from a report which was uh, compiled uh, after the two wars, which is very critical and which says that some of these are rather inflated numbers. But we must say that after the wars, that Bulgaria was ruined, that's um, out of question. But the other countries were not in, in much better situation because it was great strain, many people, and uh, casualties, 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 wounded, uh, and everything. So great pressure on destruction, destruction of villages, especially on the territories which were the theater of war. In Macedonia, Thrace, that was something which, uh, in again, pictures abound in about uh, the places which were destroyed. Well, and finally, I will conclude, finally, uh, this, these Balkan Wars fixed a term which uh, I read, and I've mentioned it in front of students in my classes, that I was shocked when I read Balkanization with reference to Africa. A process of Balkanization which is taking place in Africa. Well, the term Balkanization seems to have been finally fixed in its very negative meaning after the Balkan Wars. It began during the Russo-Turkish War of 1877-78. It continued during a small Serbo-Bulgarian War and all the contests uh, to wars. But after the Balkan Wars, this was a term which comes into all evaluations, estimations of what's the Balkans. Balkans is a negative term. Balkanization means petty, rude, savage, actually, conflicts between neighbors, etc. Well, thank you, and uh, I think I can stop here. I hope I did not uh, destroy your balance, or in, in a balance, by those pictures. Yes? I have a question. We have as casualties, I told you, destruction there is because the theater war of war is Macedonia, also Thrace, not only Macedonia. Uh, well, my uh, judgment about casualties is based not on Bulgarian or other sources. I told you that this is a book which was compiled by, uh, well, respected representatives, members of the Balkan Commission from Austria, France, Germany, Great Britain, Russia, United States. So they have compiled a lot of material about the destruction of local people in Ceres, everywhere in Macedonia where there were not only battles, but also where, for example, Serbs thought that these are Bulgarians and they have to be punished by something, or Bulgarians punished those who thought themselves as Greeks or whatever. So uh, there is mm, uh, burned cities, but I can't give you the numbers of local people. Mm. These are numbers which actually, the, the numbers that I gave you, are numbers which are by country. And since Macedonia as a country did not come into existence, there is no mm, survey of Macedonia. Macedonia 
did not exist even as boundaries in, the, in those years. The Ottomans never had a province which is Macedonia. There were different provinces, Salonika, Kosovo, others, but not Macedonia. So uh, the geographic boundaries are a bit fluid, and the numbers actually follow the boundaries of the states. If I... So, well, <laughs> girls or boys first? <laughs> hmm? Girls? Yes. Okay, uh, my question is also related to those numbers. Is there any tendency among countries to report bigger expenditures, bigger casualties, so later on they can get... Uh, with the casualties, I don't think they had great interest in reporting bigger casualties, but with the numbers, uh, actually the reporters, uh, they have taken the numbers from the countries and they immediately say that it, they seem to be, especially, they quote the case of Montenegro, that they can't have such expenditures bearing in mind what their budget is and what their I mean, material basis is. So I'm quite sure that these are inflated numbers. The fact is, without, I mean, I'm not an economist, so I can't say how corrupt these are, but I suspect, too, that there is a tendency to inflate. Do they play a role later on in terms of asking for more compensation? Uh, uh, well, price? certainly the winners insisted on compensations. I mean, they have to be paid. The, but Bulgaria has no reason to uh, inflate much of its numbers because, anyway, they won't be paid. And it's so. Okay. Um, you see, every time in the uh, early 10 years, so 20 years in the Balkans, when borders change and how they want to change, I'm assuming it's a journey in the European Union, uh, there's a new history book which is published, which is completely different from any previous one. And we notice that through the history, uh, those books and cartoons were very often fertile, fertile soil for survival of national feelings. And historical revisionism, patriarchal history. Uh, there have been rumors in uh, academic circles about writing one history book from the Balkan history, uh, which would be written by former Yugoslavian republics, uh, only for Yugoslavia to reconcile things from the past. Do you think something like that would be feasible, just for former Yugoslavian republics or for the entire Balkan? Well, I attended, I was for a short while member of such a project for an entirely Balkan textbook. Uh, well, we were confronted, and I was not, I was skeptic from the outset, but we were confronted with such problems like Bulgaria wants Vasil Levski, it's the national hero, to be included in such a textbook. Turks say, who is he? He is a minor in not even a rebel, he was uh, sentenced as a criminal. So uh, that was something which uh, apparently Balkans were not prepared, not yet prepared for. Hope, hopefully they would eventually. I will give you an example. These are workbooks which I torture some of the students to read. They don't, but I put them uh, faithfully both in um, on reserve and even on the dot learn. They are a set of four. Ottoman Empire, nation and nation, national building in the Balkans, the Balkan Wars, and the fourth one is uh, World War II. Uh, what was, the idea was, it, they were, they collect information about key issues from all points of view. Serbian, Ottoman, well, Turkish sources, let me, documents. The idea was they were published in English, but that they would be translated in all the languages of the Balkans. I don't think they were translated in any language. All the countries, for Bulgaria I'm sure, because there was a debate, and the Ministry of Education said, no, 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 this is not patriotic. At school, children should become good Bulgarians, then, when then comes, they decide. But, and the parent, I'm not sure about Croatia. At some point, I think Croatia was uh, on the point of translating. But apparently, none of the countries, it, I'm talking about this Balkan project. 
I think that within former Yugoslavia there are similar problems, only Balkans are, it's magnified, yeah? So uh, there are still, uh, well, disputes between Serbia and Kosovo. Hmm? Kosovo is already a state in the Balkans. Macedonia, I mean, it's uh, having problems with everybody, I'm afraid, at this moment. Hopefully that they would be resolved, but with the neighbors in particular. So, uh, I don't know, I'm not optimistic at this moment. Yes. Yes, you, you did not mention too much the work of you know, the great fathers in the world and so on. But I, I wanted to ask you about that. I just want maybe, because it seems to me the Western historiography maybe it tends to overstate the world of the great fathers, and maybe the regional historiography uh, tends to overstate uh, the role of the national diplomacies. So, uh, is that uh, there's a trend? In the uh, specifically about the Balkan Wars, it was a, an event outside the control of the great powers. Actually, the great powers were to the last moment hoping to prevent, actually they were not suspecting, they had other problems. They had problems elsewhere and they were much more essential than, they were afraid that anything that begins in the Balkans may expand into a world war and actually that's what happened. So they were trying to prevent Russia, for example, when it finally sensed the problems in the Balkans, they uh, encouraged an alliance, but not against the Ottomans. They were uh, encouraging an alliance between Serbia and Bulgaria and Greece against Austria-Hungary. So the Balkans did what they wanted in this specific case. There are very few cases when Afterwards, I mean, uh, the great powers intervene, they support this or that or that uh, state at final peace treaties. In this specific case, the great powers seem to have been detached. I mean, they had indeed other problems. I mean, don't forget Russia with Japan, with uh, tensions with Austria, tensions with Germany, but even with France, some problems. Uh, Britain is more interested in what's taking place in India rather than uh, the Balkans. So nobody wants these, as we were called, the Balkanites, savages, to take to arms. So uh, in this particular case, I think after, at the peace uh, conclusion level, the great powers, I mean, not surprising that the first treaty or, was in London. Yeah. So uh, great powers did indeed control a lot, but not always. I mean, the small children, the naughty children did what they could sometimes. Well, uh, it didn't take long because uh, the peace was in 1913 that was concluded. 1914, uh, we have a war, and it begins with Serbia. I mean, so. Uh, Serbia and Austria-Hungary engaged over Bosnia. Yeah? Uh, so uh, there wasn't time. Bulgaria very quickly improved its relations with uh, the Ottoman Empire. As I told you, they became even allies very quickly. But uh, it's only after the World War that there was an arrangement of the relations actually. I mean, everything else before that was Peace, which was immediately upset by, because all the countries in the Balkans were involved in World War I. And although Bulgaria waited a bit and uh, Serbia was immediately in, the Ottomans were more or less immediately in, so were all the, I mean, the Balkans were again boiling. And Bulgarians were trying to take what was their due. That's, I'm sorry, they thought so, yeah. <laughs> and they were not, uh, I said what they thought was their due, yeah. So, 
Did I silence you? No more questions? No more questions. Um, Professor Branella, thank you very much for your lecture and contribution. This program is brought to you by AUBG Talks. For more, please visit us at aubg.bg talks.